Greetings in Christ. We begin the day with prayer. Dear Lord, be with us now as we take a moment to uh, consider what we believe and teach and confess and how we might better share that with others. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we will continue with this booklet, which we have copies of them in the narthex. You feel free to pick any of them up if you'd like. If you want to follow along or just read them yourself. Uh, classical Lutheranism. For the purpose of this little pamphlet, we are going to offer a simple explanation of Lutheranism that is classic, historic, and genuine. Not the liberal version of it, but how can you know what that is? Thankfully, classic Lutheran confessions are contained in this in a single book, the Book of Concord, published in 1580. For nearly 500 years, the Book of Concord has been used by genuine Lutherans to share their faith and confession with the world by saying simply, this is what we believe, teach, and confess. And because we do, this is what we therefore reject and condemn. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First things first. Let's talk first about the Bible and its place in classical Lutheran churches. If you want to understand genuine Lutheranism, you have to understand what we believe about the Bible. The Bible meaning book, contains a remarkable variety of liter literature, history, poetry, narratives, wisdom, literature, prophecies, visions, and so on, written over many centuries by the wide variety of human authors. The Bible is often called holy and held to be sacred scriptures, holy writings, because the words in the Bible were given to human authors to write by direct inspiration from God, the Holy Spirit. Inspiration means to breathe out. And that's why, that's why classic Lutheranism believe, believes and teaches that the Bible is capable of, is not capable, is, teaches that the Bible is incapable of error, infallible, and free from error, inerrant. Modern, modernist Christians and modernist Lutherans know Oh, I think I, uh, no longer hold the Bible in such high regard. Rather, they view the Bible as filled with errors. Therefore, it can be ignored and explained away when it does not square with modern viewpoints about every, everything from science, life, birth, death, sexuality, marriage, and so on. Lutheranism does not regard the Bible as simply a lot of do's and don'ts, though, of course, there, are, there is that. But that's not the main point of the Bible. No. Above all else, we cherish the Bible because it is, in it God reveals with absolute truthfulness and authority the good news of salvation, life and hope, joy and the future of Jesus in Jesus Christ. The Bible is all about Jesus and his gospel. Gospel means good news. To understand the good news revealed in the Bible, we need to understand why it is, in fact, such good news. The Bible teaches that we human beings came into this, this world. We have a huge problem, a problem we cannot fix or get ourselves out of. It's a God-sized problem that requires a God-sized solution. We are talking about sin. As a result of sin, there is guilt and shame, plenty to go around. Why? Because the first human being, humans, disobeyed God and rejected him and his will for them. This rebellion was a sin against God and has become our inheritance. The law of God is like a mirror. It tells us, look into it, look into it long and hard. The more we look, the more we see what we are truly like, the more we see ourselves as God sees us, and the more we realize we need to be rescued from the inevitable result of sin, eternal separation from God for all eternity. Once we realize and come to grips with our huge sin problem, we are ready for the good news. And wow, is it ever good news. God's gift of his son, Jesus Christ, is the solution for our problem. There is hope. There is love and peace beyond all human understanding. God, who created us and everything, wants everyone 
to have this peace, love, joy, and hope. So much, in fact, did God love this world that he sent his only, his one and only Son into it to redeem it, to save it. By taking upon himself the world's guilt of sin, only God can solve a God-sized problem. And no greater problem than sin has ever been, or ever will be, experienced by human beings. Because of what Jesus did for all of us, sin is forgiven. Your sins are forgiven because of what Jesus has done for you. The good news of the gospel is all about Jesus. Jesus lived on earth for 33 years, and during the last three years of his life, he was engaged in his active mission of teaching and saving, and then finally suffering and dying and rising again to save the world from sin. What he suffered, God has now accepted as a full, complete, and perfect sacrifice for sin. Not some sin, not most sin, but all sin, because of what Jesus Christ did for us while he lived, keeping God's law perfectly, and then suffering and dying for our sin and rising again. God declares us forgiven, he declares you righteous because of what Jesus Christ has done for you. You are right with God. We call this essential truth the doctrine of justification by grace alone, through faith alone, on accord of Christ alone. And it is the very beating heart of the scriptures and the most important teaching of a Lutheran church. You will hear a lot about it, and you will hear it often. We Lutherans love to talk about Jesus and how salvation is a free gift because of him. We cannot earn it, and we do not deserve it. God loves us and gives it to us as a free gift. We, he even gives us the free gift, the gift of faith, which is simply trust in the good news of Jesus Christ by God's grace alone, through faith alone. We are saved because of Jesus Christ alone. And that's a brief explanation of uh, traditional Lutheranism. Uh, tomorrow we'll uh, look at our, our hymns, then we'll hit readings for a couple of days, and then we'll uh, finish up. Uh, so how did Lutheranism come to be? We'll do that uh, in a few days. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Be with us now as we go into the day, uh, carrying us into the things that we have laid out. You plan for us to do ahead of time. Loving you and our neighbors best we can with your help, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.